We will continue our study of statistical inference, talking now about the margin of error. Suppose that we obtain the GRE scores for 64 randomly chosen education students who took the GRE. Further, suppose that the average of these GRE scores is 147. We would like a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. This is an example that I've used in past videos, and we created a confidence interval. Here it is. We are 95% confident that for education students who take the GRE, the population mean is between 144.8 and 149.2. In other words, we are saying that the population mean falls somewhere within this range from 144.8 to 149.2. Notice that our sample mean is right in the middle, as it always will be when we construct a confidence interval for the mean. The distance between our sample mean and the lower boundary of the interval is 2.2. The distance between our sample mean and the upper boundary of the interval is also 2.2. Of course, we expect the same distance to both edges of the interval since 147 is right in the middle. The 2.2 is referred to as the margin of error. That is, if we take the sample mean and add and subtract the margin of error, that gives us our confidence interval. It turns out that there's actually a formula for the margin of error. The margin of error, which I sometimes call MO, is equal to the critical value times the standard deviation of the means. In our example, the critical value is 1.96 because we want a 95% confidence interval, so we obtain this from the standard normal distribution. The standard deviation of the means is 1.1. If we multiply these, that gives us a margin of error of 2.16, or about 2.2. So if I take the formula for a confidence interval, which is the sample mean plus or minus the margin of error, I would take 147, and I would add and subtract 2.2. That gives me an interval that ranges from 145.8 to 149.2. So our 95% confidence interval for the population mean is that the mean is between 145.8 and 149.2. Wait a second. We calculated that already. We calculated that by testing all possible hypotheses and rejecting those that we rejected, retaining those that we retained, and keeping the retained means to form our confidence interval. What did we just do? We got the exact same result using the margin of error. Do you mean to tell me that instead of testing all those hypotheses, I can make the same determination by taking the sample mean and adding and subtracting the margin of error? That's exactly what I mean to tell you. This is a shortcut. The result is the same. We still are retaining within our confidence interval all the values of the hypothesized mean that we would not reject. But the shortcut for determining what those values are is to add and subtract the margin of error from the sample mean. From now on, I don't want to conduct all those hypotheses tests. I can tell you which hypotheses will be retained by adding and subtracting the margin of error from the sample mean. And that is sure a lot simpler, and that is what I want to do because I like simple. Now let's use R and see how much simpler it is to create confidence intervals for the mean using the margin of error. 
This script is for calculating a 95% confidence interval for the mean GRE score of education students. These are hypothetical data. You've seen this before if you've been watching the previous videos. But this time, I will use the margin of error method. First, I need the critical value. I find that using Q-norm. Q-norm will provide us percentiles on a normal distribution. All we have to do is tell Q-norm how much of the area should be beneath the critical value and what the mean and standard deviation is of the normal distribution that we want to use. We want 97.5% or 0.975, Q-norm uses proportions, to be beneath the critical value. Remember that there's 0.025 in the lower and upper tails, so we only want 0.025 above the percentile in the upper tail. We're going to use a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. That's the standard normal distribution. Let's run that. Here's our critical value. Just about 1.96. Now I want to show you that if we had not put in the mean and standard deviation, but had just said Q norm 0.975, that we get the same value. That's because if you don't enter a mean and a standard deviation to the Q norm or P norm functions, they assume you want to use the standard normal distribution. Now I need the standard error of the mean. That's simply the standard deviation of GRE scores, 8.75, divide it by the square root of our sample size, in this case, the square root of 64. To calculate Mo, I take the product of the critical value and the standard error of the mean. Mo is just over 2.1. Now we can find our lower bound. We take the sample mean of 147, and subtract Mo. And our upper bound. We take the sample mean of 147 and add Mo. The lower bound is 144.86. The upper bound is 149.14. Note that we have a little more precision than what we saw in previous examples because when we retain all our values in our variables, it's maintaining more precision in each variable. Therefore, we have more precision in the calculation. And that's it. We've calculated a confidence interval using R in just a few steps. Compare the length of this script to the length of the script we used when we calculated the confidence interval the first time. I think you'll agree this is simpler. So let's use it.